Hello, Tamahagane and Dr. Sanjay. I am here to talk to you all about ataxia, specifically cerebellar ataxia. Now, I am going to talk to you about ataxia with the help of some delicious beverage from Phillips Brewery, some Slipstream Cream Ale. And um, due to the fact that alcohol inhibits activity in the cerebellum and causes signs of ataxia, we're going to do a little demonstration of just how this works. So, I would like to read to you a quotation from Gerard J. Totora and Brian Derrickson and their wonderful book, uh, Principles of Anatomy and Physiology, 12th edition, copyright 2009, John Wiley and Sons Incorporated. A little snippet about ataxia, clinical connection, ataxia. Damage to the cerebellum through trauma or disease disrupts muscle coordination, a condition called ataxia. For all you Latin-speaking folks out there, you'll know that ataxia means without order. Blindfolded people with ataxia cannot touch the tip of their nose with a finger because they cannot coordinate movement with their sense of where the body part is located. I don't yet have ataxia, obviously. Another sign of ataxia is changed speech pattern due to uncoordinated speech muscles. I'm feeling a little bit closer to having this symptom, but not quite there yet. Cerebellar damage may also result in staggering or abnormal walking movements. People who consume too much alcohol show signs of ataxia because alcohol inhibits activity of the cerebellum. So, something that can result from ataxia is dysarthria. Do not confuse dysarthria with ataxia. It, oh, not, not ataxia, with uh, aphasia. <laughs> aphasia refers to uh, like confusing the intent of your word. Wait, wait, okay, wait. I'm gonna. Um, one second. The content. Right. The content of your speech is affected by aphasia. Dysarthria is. Uh, it affects the motor functions, and you have slurred speech. Slurred speech because of. It's, it's happening. Do you notice? It's happening because it's happening now and I'm demonstrating this to you. This is all in the name of science right now. So, to start, I still touch my nose, but I wasn't blindfolded. Okay, wait. Let's just see. Okay, if I was blind... No. I can still touch my nose. Got that going. But, to start three, yeah. Dysfunction of the... The... Your... Your muscles of speech, um, it's slurred, and so, um, okay, so I'm gonna just in the interest of intellectual property and um, all that jazz, um, I am quoting this, I'm retrieving this information from Wikipedia, en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash dysarthria, retrieved on May 20th, 2010. Uh, this is the article for dysarthria. And so, um, you know, uh, cranial nerves affected are five, trigeminal. Seven, facial. Nine, glossopharyngeal. Ten, vagus. Twelve, 
That wasn't okay. Ah, let's get them both in there. Twelve. Hypogloss hypoglossal nerve. Those are the ones that are back. Those are the ones those nerves combined, you know, affecting my tongue, throat, lips, lungs. Lungs there affected. That is what is making me sound like this because those nerves are being affected. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so it's important to note that all the ataxia symptoms I'm experiencing right now are not because of any sort of lesion in my nervous system but they are because of the effects of alcohol inhibiting my cerebellar functions and mimicking that of um, really truly having a more long-term lasting uh, ataxia due to a lesion. Yeah. This is going to all be gone tomorrow when I go and massage people at Outreach. Yeah. So, another another one, another result of ataxia is a little something we in the medical profession like to refer to as dysdiadokinesia. Dysdiadokinesia. Yes, see how well it just falls off the tongue. However, even when you look at the Latin meaning of this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, we tr no, no, it does. It does. It just doesn't make sense to me right now. But if we literally translate just diadokinesia, it means bad across received movements, which that probably does make sense. I'm sure that makes sense. It, I just it's just not making sense to me right now. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. It makes sense. So. Um, it means you can't you can't do rapidly alternating movements. Your rapidly alternating movements are impaired. Pronation, supination. Look at that. It is not impaired. I can do this so rapidly. And they say that your feet are going to be more impaired than your hands. Let's see about that. Uh, Oh, this, this feels a little impaired. Uh, Alright, can we, um... Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> there is some aphasia because we're not remembering the... Ah, yes. Eversion and inversion. There we go. I got it. I got it. No, it's all there. Don't worry. It's all there. I'll rapidly evert and invert Look at that. No, no, it's barely even impaired. So we're going to go to a little bit more of the movement. Very soon. I'm going to set this up to see other movements. Yeah. So basically, this is my ultimate special neurological test here. We're just going to... I'm making this up. This is all improv. So, uh, just, uh, watch this and we'll see how impaired one can truly be. Okay, so it goes, it goes, abduct the arms! Good. Flex the arms! Extend the arms! Uh, flex on the hip joint! Oh! Go! Oh. Bilateral! Um... Internally rotate. Externally rotate. Uh, Protonate, supinate. Uh, uh, flex the trunk. 
Extend the trunk. Uh. Rotate the head. We're so good, you know? Not even impaired at all. Yeah, ataxia. Does it exist? You be the judge.